All right, YouTube, Occult Literature Video 52 on the Book of Tobit. It's an apocryphal work originally combined with the original, like, early 1600s King James Bible. If you get one today, of course, you're not going to find the Apocrypha in it. There's no Gospel of Nicodemus. There's no Bell and the Dragon. There's no Book of Enoch. It's rather sad because that's most of the interesting material, really. And I do plan to release several other of the Apocryphal works. Not all of them, but several where they overlap with the occult and the spiritual realm more deeply. As with the Book of Tobit, I'll explain exactly how. It's a very strange track. Uh, link in the description to where you can buy my edition of this work off of Amazon. It's obviously in the public domain. It comes from antiquity and was translated into English in the 1600s, so pretty self-explanatory. Uh, second link to my book's blog where many other works as well are available. Everything from grimoires to alchemy, philosophical works, social works, anything related to the occult, folk magic, herbal medicine, and so forth. Um, the book of Tobit is essentially a long story about Tobit. Who's, he's... he's uh, living in Nineveh, and he's a, a, a rather pious man. He holds to the faith of the God of the Hebrews. Uh, most others around him don't. Their various degrees have fallen away from this path. They're just outright heretics or pagans, or they just sort of mock the idea of this spiritual path. And his son Tobias, uh, of course, goes forth on this journey, uh, is guided by the archangel Raphael, actually, uh, in this story, but though he doesn't know it at first, in order to go secure marriage and, and collect money that Tobias is owed by a friend and so forth, they put in trust uh, to go forth and make his life and do all the things that he needs to do. Unfortunately, the person that he wants to marry, or that Tobias rather has suggested he should marry, uh, is actually under the amorous spell of Asmodeus, which is a demon you'll know from the Ars Gosha, demon of lust. Uh, Asmodeus has caused several of her suitors over time on their wedding night to die, and thus she's been married a number of times each time. Asmodeus kills the suitor because he feels jealous. He wants to have, I guess, nocturnal uh, intercourse with this woman over and over. And uh, this is also, I believe, Tobias' uh, cousin, which is rather funny, but not unheard of in those days. But uh, anyway... The Archangel Raphael uh, aids him because Tobit and Tobias are both religious. They've found favor with God, and even though they're going through struggles and adversity, they're being looked over, even though they don't really know it. And of course, Tobit has been struck blind. There's a very strange, mystical-sounding piece to it, because Tobias goes out to bury one of his dead kindred, sort of sleeps by the city walls, and some sparrows actually are nesting there, and they fly over, and they shit in his eyes and make him go blind. Um, I, I guess he has glaucoma or cataracts or something like that as a result of bird poop. Um, so he's not really capable of doing anything when Tobias leaves uh, with this archangel, Raphael. Uh, the archangel then instructs him on how to defeat Asmodeus, uh, as well as later how to cure Tobit's blindness. They live to ripe old ages, and of course it has a happy ending. Tobias lives a long time, has many kids, their wealth increases, Tobit... Uh, of course, gets to see the destruction of that wicked city of Nineveh, and it's all because Raphael came down after they found favor with their lord and helped them defeat this evil demon that was killing all of the suitors uh, of his, his eventual wife, Sarah. So I decided to release an edition of this primarily because it does mention Asmodeus. It's demonology right there. It talks a little bit about this demon. It has the mystic stuff, and the ritualism associated with both dispelling the demon using fish gall as incense, uh, as well as curing, using the same to cure Tobit's blindness, is essentially witchery. Uh, this would have been part of a larger oral tradition. Now, this is not a canonical work within the modern Protestant movement. It is, however, included in Jewish canonical writings. Uh, it is accepted by certain Christians as well. It's just not accepted. You know, you, you go to your average fire and brimstone Baptist church, you're not going to find the book of Tobit in whatever Bible they're using. But you may find it in other compilations uh, over time. It's, it's one of those works that was kind of not accepted and yet is accepted by certain groups, gaining more acceptance over time as opposed to some that are gaining less. Now, the book of Revelation would come to mind, a canonical work that most people don't take seriously anymore, 
Book of Tobit is seen as more necessarily historical. Uh, it's in period, it is an ancient work, it comes from the BC period, it's not like it was written in the medieval era and we don't have any older manuscripts of it. Extremely important work for a cult, <clears throat> for the occult rather, as with most of the apocryphal works. Uh, the standard stories of the Bible have a tendency to omit some of the mystic detail. I think that was, I think that's prevalent for a reason. Uh, whereas some of, you know, Bell and the Dragon, certainly the Book of Tobit or the Book of Enoch, they contain all of these more strange references that really are more of interest to people that are intending uh, to study the mystic paths. Very good work. Uh, it's middling in length for a, for a Bible, but you got to realize the Bible isn't a book, it's a compilation of shorter manuscripts. Uh, it would be middling in length as far as those are concerned. Again, link in the description to where you can purchase my edition off of Amazon. Second link to my book's blog. That's about all. Peace out.